Hello, planet Earth. You are now watching Outside the Box, the portable podcast that goes directly to the source of the most intriguing guests. I'm your host, Awkwards, and it's been a crazy past few weeks. I've had strep throat and acid reflux at the same damn time. It's been crazy, but, uh, you know, uh, the strep throat is gone. Still fighting the reflux a little bit, but my birthday is tomorrow, and I'm feeling almost like myself again, so it's good to be back and podcasting, and we are back with not, not something normal. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are taking this podcast up a notch. We are taking it to a presidential level today, people. We're in UC Davis, by the way, near the UC UC Davis campus, and you guessed it, Davis, California, and uh, we have a very special co-pilot for this episode, so we're going to get right into it. I'd like to introduce to the show a medical doctor, an activist, a presidential candidate, and even a musician who I voted for president and who I wish was the president right now. Please put your hands together at home for the one and only <laughs> Dr. Jill Stein. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. Aww. We appreciate it so much. We're, oh, man. We are such big fans over here. Um, how is everything with you? Well, let me just say the honor is mine. And, you know, the awkwards are the yes. words that need to be said right now. Yeah, we got, we I got agree. a lot of words to say. Some are hard words. They're awkward words. They're, yeah. they're, they're power words, you know, and, and that's what we got to... We got to speak truth to power right now more than ever. Absolutely. And there's a lot of truth to be spoken. There's a Absolutely. lot of truth happening out in the streets right now. And and it's all about I think catching that wave and not letting them talk us out of our power. You know. Absolutely. I was glad to hear, man. So I, I see that you have a rally today in yeah. Davis, California. You want to tell us a little bit about that coming up in just a little bit when we yeah, get out of here? We're going to have a, a rally on campus with students and activists and community people and greens. And, uh, you know, we're just going to gather up the power and, and give it a boost and make it more powerful because that's our job right now. Our job is to not let this um, this illusion of corporate power, this illusion of neo-fascist uh, rule, uh, talk us out of the democracy that, that we own. You know, we have that promise of democracy and we're going to live it. And oh, yeah. we do have the power to make it so. And, you know, that's kind of my larger message here, oh, which absolutely. is that, you know, think Richard Nixon, you know, mm. uh, what did we accomplish? I mean, not only was he impeached, but even while he was in power, what did we do? We brought the troops home from Vietnam. We uh, got women's right to choose from a very conservative Supreme Court. We enacted the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act and created the EPA and established uh, workers' health and safety protections through OSHA. You know, how do we do that under one of the most authoritarian and yeah. repressive, corrupt presidents ever? Yeah. We did it because we knew <laughs> Our lives were on the line and we were out in the street uh, because our lives depended on it. Well, we've kind of come full circle and yeah, people I'll have say. once again realized <laughs> our lives are on the line and we got to stand up like we mean it because, in fact, we do have the power. As Alice Walker says, biggest way people give up power is by not knowing we have it to start with. We have yeah. it. There's some uh, obstacles to uh, using it, but. Hey, uh, we got to do that. We don't have another choice. That sounds like my kind of party. <laughs> and that's <laughs> awesome. I mean, uh, it's been great to see your growth like over the last like almost like year or so and whatnot. Can you kind of like walk us through how your life has changed? Like <laughs> since we first met, like when I saw you in San Francisco at that small like uh, fundraiser to when the day Bernie conceded to Hillary and even to now. Can you kind of tell us about that experience, how it's been for you? It's been, God, what was it like, you know, it, for people who were at the DNC, mm. uh, you know, the Democratic Convention in Philadelphia, it was like entering a parallel universe where the <laughs> people, the people ruled. And there was so much power out on the street. It was like you mm -hmm. could drink it in. It was like flooding all around you. And it completely erased this corporate illusion that we're mm. forced to live in. Yeah. And, you know, it was kind of like being at Standing Rock. Mm -hmm. um, we got to get into that, too. You know, it was like Standing Rock came <laughs> to Philadelphia <laughs> and there was reality. And um, and it was like. 
people were drunken on the sense of community and power. And, and, and it was like the veil was lifted from our eyes. And uh, there was a force there that was much bigger than any of us, much bigger than anything I had ever experienced us. And, and you know, we had this rally called the Power Rally. Mm-hmm. And at the Power Rally, it's like thunder and lightning <laughs> just started striking <laughs> all around us as if the heavens were How saying, yep, yep, you know, <laughs> this is def- th- that, that the universe is kind of shifting course right now. And you guys uh, have a responsibility, yeah. you know, it, that if... Civilization and human rights and human values as we know them are going to survive. Yeah. Uh, it's on us. You know, no one else is going to fix it for us. Yeah. The Democrats are not going to do it in spite of what they say. Nobody ever thought the Republicans were going to do it. But there were a lot of people thinking that the Democrats were going to do it. Uh, but, you know, as they revealed, as the WikiLeaks uh, uh, revelations of the DNC emails revealed, Democrats are not going to do it. You know, some of us weren't so surprised about that because that That's how it's been for (laughs) about 50 years. They Uh keep pretending, you know, and then, oops, oh, sorry, one little thing changed and we can't let you, you know, get your nomination for president, et cetera. So it's been a big wake up. And just last week, you know, at the DNC, the Democratic National Committee Uh had its elections. And that was a big wake up for those who suddenly you know, had to confront reality, uh, they're not going to fix it. And even though they say, oh, just wait a little bit longer, you know, just wait your turn, just wait a few more months or a few more years. It ain't happening. It's on us. We're out of time. And I guess for me, what it's been like is just, you know, having to see how, um, uh, the, 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 like overwhelming reality in every direction you look, whether it is, police violence, whether Mm -hmm. it's the student debt, whether it's the wars that are just about to take another big Mm -hmm. leap forward right now with Mm -hmm. the ground troops going into Syria, Um, you know, whether it is the news about the climate last week that the methane uh, from this permafrost, which is like frozen Mm -hmm. debris from hundreds of thousands of years ago, (laughs) is melting. And guess what that debris produces? It's methane, which is the most powerful greenhouse gas out there. It's happening. Nobody knew when it was going to happen, but it's happening now. So it's like, this is it, folks. Yeah. It's now. It's now. We got to stand up and assert that power now. Absolutely. It's it's certainly been a very, like from an outsider's view, it seems to have been an amazing, amazing journey. And, you know, as we know, unfortunately, we got the racist Cheeto face with the wig as our president instead of you. So my question is like, what can we do? Like, to me, it's like I see people talking about impeachment, but I feel realistically it seems like a lot of work because it's like we got Pence in line right after. We got Ryan after that and whatever jerk is waiting after him. Like, feasibly, like, do we just have to sit and wait for four years and just resist at every corner? Like, what can we really do? Like, what is feasible action to stop this? Yes. Is my question. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> I'd say... um don't under don't underestimate how quickly things can change. You know, Chris Hedges, the uh, the investigative reporter mm-hmm. who was a war reporter for the New York Times. You know, he was in um, uh, Berlin when the wall came down, and he said that the week before, people were saying. Uh, Maybe in 10 years, you know, maybe in 10 years we'll get it together to sort of break this iron grip of this very authoritarian mm. government. And all of a sudden, boom, people just started going out in the streets and they yeah. were just unstoppable. An ocean of people in the streets. The government was so humiliated. They called yeah. out the troops that they said fire. The troops said, no, there's moms and babies there. We're not going to fire. Yeah. And the government fell and the wall came down and it happened boom like that. Remember, Trump is actually in a very vulnerable position. He has these 500 businesses all around the world, which create a minefield of liabilities for him. Oh yeah. Conflicts of interest. Exactly. The emoluments clause, constitutional violations, legal violations, uh, bribery, uh, the appearance and probability of bribery going on. So he's already tied up in uh, legal 
uh, mm-hmm. stranglehold right now. Yeah. And, you know, he's lost uh, the fight against, uh, you know, against the courts on the immigration mm-hmm. uh, outrage. And he's being challenged again now on his second plan. He's lost some of his major advisors. Yeah. The guy is in a very, uh, <laughs> he's, he's being cornered. Yeah, I don't want to be him. <laughs> so we're sti- we got to keep fighting on every issue where it counts. And this is a way of life, you know, for uh, for the future, uh, for yeah. the foreseeable future. This is who we are. This is what we do. This is our community. And, um, you know, let's get used to it and make it worth celebrating yeah. and enjoying. Yeah. And I think people really underestimate the power of protesting. I see a lot of people that whine and cry like, oh, the cry babies are protesting. But like it really gets stuff done. Like if, <laughs> in the masses numbers, you cannot ignore it. Like. It's really funny to me when people complain about it. It's like, right. I mean, there was a president who was just brought down in Guatemala about a year and a half ago yeah. by big crowds out in the street. Mm-hmm. What were they upset about? Corruption. Same thing in South Korea. Their president is being impeached because of corruption. So, mm-hmm. you know, the, the media, the sort of dominant paradigm that just sort mm-hmm. of oozes into our brains that you know it, it, in every way imaginable keeps telling us that we're powerless yeah. and they refuse to uh lift up these messages these reality messages that we really are powerful yeah. we really change history we're doing it already and we just got to keep doing it we do have the power and the minute we stand up with the courage of our convictions we are unstoppable and to my mind the key here is that we got to fight on the issues you know to stop the deportations to oh, yes. stop the pipelines etc to stop the um you know the devastation of indigenous people we have yeah. to stand up on all the issues but we also have to stand together and that's what a political party is it is essentially a coalition that stays together and that works on staying together. It's sort of like a big marriage yeah. of lots of people. It doesn't stay together without a lot of work. Uh, you know, or forget the word marriage, a relationship. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's yeah. a relationship <laughs> of a whole lot of people who oh, yeah. agreed to work together around an agenda, yeah. an explicit agenda for people, planet, and peace over profit. That's mm. what our agenda is. That's great. Is. I like that. And that's catchy. I like that. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. Well, that was, that was a hard one. Um, series of whatever it is, six or seven words. We've been working on that. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's great. I think you found it. I think you found it. And that kind of segues into yes. what I want to talk about now. Like, I just want to briefly run through a couple executive orders and let's just give our thoughts mm. briefly, okay? Okay. First one, the Muslim ban. Outrageous, unconstitutional, oh and unconscionable. It just makes me so mad because I just want to say, you know, like, I have so many, like, Muslim friends and I come from a place like Stockton, California, where that stuff just does not fly. Sometimes I feel like we live, I live in a different planet than some other places. Like where I come from, that's the type of thing that'll get you beat up. Like, you know what I mean? If I see somebody pulling someone's headpiece or something, that, that's not good. Like we're, we have to let them know that that is not acceptable in it, any yes. way. That separation, the racism, it like... Don't get beat up, man. We're going to send you to Dr. Jill Stein to have to save your life. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll just say that it's it is racism. Yeah, Plain and absolutely. simple Islamophobia absolutely. Absolutely. because it, there is nothing to justify it. The people from, you know, no one from these countries has actually yeah. uh, killed anyone yeah. in the U.S. So, the, you know, factually it's just wrong. And in fact, no refugees, zero refugees yeah. uh, have killed anybody. Or to put it another way, refugees, since the Refugee Act was passed in like 1980, Zero people have been killed yeah. by a refugee. Refugees are people that we trying have to get created. Yeah. Right. They're trying to get away from the crisis that yeah. we have created. If you have a problem with refugees, how about yeah. we stop it's creating ridiculous. refugees in the first place Very by well overturning said. other governments uh, through, you know, economic predation, through uh, the war on drugs from, you know, south of the border in this country. Yeah. Uh, we have generated this crisis. We have a responsibility to deal with this 
this crisis. And we all have a responsibility to shut off the crisis. Let's stop creating it, for God's sake. And we're kind of supposed to be the country that allows people in anyway, right? Like, hello. Yes, <laughs> give us your, your poor, yeah. your huddled masses. We it's are ridiculous. the country of the Statue of Liberty, or is it the razor wire fence? Which one yeah, is it going to be? It's ridiculous. Okay, so the next one. We agree. The wall. Is this, is this <laughs> thing even possible? Like, can you even build a wall that big in four years? Is that even possible? Like, I, I don't understand this at all. Can you can really do that? Uh, you know, so they say, and, you know, I'll just say it's so much the wrong thing to do oh that, you yeah. know, I mean, environmentally, it's devastating to, to species that cross. Yeah. It's devastating to indigenous tribes that actually straddle the border. Um, you know, it's... It's just this in this day and age, we need to be building bridges, literally and figuratively, not building walls. Absolutely. The next one I want to talk about is the Dakota Access Pipeline. Now, something I really admire about you, you're the only presidential candidate that went there or even seemed to acknowledge it, it period. So I'm curious what your um, what your experience like was there and uh, where it goes from here. Yeah. You know. It keeps getting bigger. I mean, my experience yeah. there was wonderful. It was like the experience of everybody I've ever talked to who went to Standing Rock, that it mm-hmm. is uh, it's a transformative experience. You get to experience life without corporations. I mean, yeah. walking onto a, yeah. a reservation, which is, you know, it's it's a transformative place. And yeah. you get to see what it's like when, when people rule instead of corporations rule. Oh, and yeah. it's just different in every way imaginable. Um you know, and I got so swept up in what was going on there in the protests. I did not go there to participate in civil disobedience. I wasn't yeah. going to do that. <laughs> but, you know, it was kind of irresistible to see. Oh, people yeah. I mean, how could just, you not feel like I would want to? <laughs> when, when, when you see people who are putting their lives on the line, mm. not just for themselves, but for all of us, for everybody, for, you know, the water that we share, the air that we share, the climate that we all depend on, and uh, human rights, indigenous rights that we all depend on, uh, and democracy, and our right to uh, the freedom of protest and freedom of speech. You know, they're putting their lives on the line for all of us. And, you know, I just felt compelled to do everything that I could to support it. And, you know, continue to do that and really encourage everybody to do that because at the end of the day we're all standing rock we all depend on everything that they are fighting for oh yeah and that fight continues oh yeah we have to stop you know not just dapple in my view no pipelines yeah. oh, should yeah. be built Most now definitely. we should be dismantling pipelines not building them yeah and i'm curious what what else we could do as far as now is concerned i, I know i've seen a lot of people doing you know pulling their money out of wells fargo and mm-hmm. bank of America of America and whatnot, which I already don't bank there. I work, I, I do all my banking at a local bank. So, you know, that that's what I'm into. But is there anything else we could do? Like, what can we, you know, now? I know the campus burnt down and all that. Like, is, is there still something that can happen? Oh, like, yeah. What? Yeah. Well, so like, you know, um, if you have some spare change, throw it their way. They've got lots of legal defense that's still ongoing. Uh, Chase Iron Eyes, I want to give a shout out to him mm-hmm. and the many, you know, brothers and sisters there who uh, really need our help and need our continued support and our continued attention. Because Absolutely. if we are not uh, shining daylight on this, then, you know, really horrible things will happen there. But as long as our eyes are on it, um, you know, it will uh, it will mitigate the damage and. And we have to keep supporting the issue and keep the issue in the headlines because they're fighting yeah. in court. That fight's going to go on. Um, you know, they should be uh, exonerated and the pipeline should be stopped. I agree completely. <laughs> I mean, it just seems like water in general is really under attack right now, especially, you know, I mean, Donald Trump is really attacking everything that's good, to be honest. And he's just got like this team of like terrible people. Like it's like the dream team of terrible people. You know what I mean? He's got <laughs> Pence and Bannon and Ben Carson. He's even got the freaking <laughs> the White House Easter Bunny as his press secretary like it's kind of crazy like 
I, I don't know. He said he was going to drain the swamp. It seems like he just filled it with more like stand by me type oh, leeches. Totally. Oh, totally. You know? Yes. <laughs> the cabinet of billionaires, uh, bigots and blowhards. Oh, and yeah. Big time. So many people who were like misled into thinking that Trump was for them. You know, I think this is wake up oh, time yeah. for them in a big Absolutely. way. You don't fill your cabinet with billionaires and, you know, the richest people, you know, the richest cabinet ever, but, you know, among the richest people in the country, yeah. you know, and then pretend that this is for everyday working people. I don't think so. And then yeah. you don't take a bad healthcare system and make it even worse. And they've got uh, Social Security and Medicare in their target here. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of working people are starting to wake up, you know, and his numbers continue mm -hmm. to plummet. Oh, yeah. And even the Republicans Rightfully so. are quaking in their boots about, oh, you yeah. know, what is this what monster? Have we done? <laughs> <laughs> And, and, you know, just that he brought in uh, Steve Bannon, kind of oh the modern Darth God. Vader, into <laughs> the Security analogy. Council in place of, I mean, yeah. it's not that I'm in love with the generals, but at least they're, you know, they're not outright, um, <laughs> you know, self-declared racist. Outright, outright, outright. Outright, <laughs> outright racist. Yes, exactly. Yeah, seriously. I mean, and, yeah. and like, where's Hillary during all this? I think one thing that, that says a lot to me about intentions and who you are. I see you, I see Bernie Sanders still on the ground fighting, even though you guys are not the president, you're still there. It seems like we have not seen a peep out of Hillary. Where is she? Is she on a milk carton somewhere? Like, can we bring up a picture of a milk carton? Like, where is she? You know, have you heard, have you seen anything? Like, what, is she hiding somewhere? I think she Playing went golf to... with Trump's wife or something? Like, where are they? I, I think she spoke at... Some college. Some she got paid week. a lot of money for. <laughs> Who knows? Probably, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I, Are you yeah. going to run in 2020? Do you have any plans? You know, I personally, I don't distinguish between running for office and running for our lives. Well, yeah, you know? you're obviously going to stay in there, but are you going to run for president, do you think, again? Um, Is that possible? I am, uh, you know, uh, we, okay, we, I'm, I'm looking around we here. We sure hope so. <laughs> we sure hope so. Uh, I, I wouldn't say no to it, put it okay. that way. You Fair know, enough. I, I'm... I'm a mother on fire. I'm afraid. I don't think I'm going to outgrow it, and I'm going to do whatever I can for as long as I can. Fair enough. And uh, if there's, you know, I just want to play the most useful role that I can. So Fair enough. Well, we're going to take two fan questions from social media real quick, okay? Awesome. Um, and if you want to get your question feature on the podcast, make sure you follow us on social media and wait for the posts and get your chance and we may read you on live. So the first question is from my boy Chris Titone out in Los Angeles. He says from Facebook, can you ask her, do you think politicians should be forced to wear leather onesies with their sponsors on them like race car drivers during their debates? <laughs> <laughs> that would be one solution and that's a cool idea the other one is to simply bar from the debates mm. uh any politicians who are there on a kind of pay-to-play mm -hmm. deal mm -hmm. that politicians who take money from lobbyists and in my view corporations or their surrogates that is you know in oh, some some places you can't take money from corporations but you can take it from their CEOs and their lawyers and all that yep. so if you are taking money from any corporate executive who also hires a lobbyist so in mm. other words if it's a little mon pa corporation and they don't hire a lobbyist mm. You could take their money because it's clean. You know, yeah. they don't have an axe to grind. If they have hired a lobbyist, they have declared yeah. they have an axe to grind. Uh -huh. So, you know, in my view, that's what sorts the wheat from the chaff. I don't think we should have cop politicians who are on the take. That's no, not okay. They shouldn't. And furthermore, our debates should be controlled by people, not by the Democratic and Republican parties. We need to replace the corporate and debate they commission. And let you in there too. Yes, right. Any <laughs> candidate who is on the ballot for enough voters that the candidate could mathematically win the election, that should be the criterion, not mm -hmm. some political kind of a litmus test mm -hmm. as to who's going to mm -hmm. support the corporate state. I you agree. know, that's currently the, yep. um, the unspoken criteria yep. for entry into the debates. Well, our next question comes from my boy Dutch Vega from the Bronx, New York. And he asks, what is it going to honestly take to turn our country into a three-party system, and what can everyday, everyday people do to make it happen? 
So one thing you could do right now is go out and register for the Green Party. <laughs> because in my view, the solution here is not just any old third party, because there are some third parties mm. that are also sport- sponsored by corporations. That suck. The key, yeah, the, <laughs> the key here is that we need a people's party. And, mm-hmm. you know, in, it, it could be some of the socialist parties. Mm-hmm. It could be Peace and Freedom, uh, the Progressive Party in Wisconsin. But it is the Green Party that kind of serves as an umbrella because it is the one party that has been able to hang in there at the national level. Mm-hmm. We are the only party that can that is still out there fighting nationally. Mm. The others have been beaten back to local party status, mm. to you know, uh, being active in a couple of cities mm. or in a state. But if we're fighting battles at the national level, and we have to fight them at the national level, we cannot give them a pass to conduct endless war and to do deportations. We have to challenge them nationally as well as challenge locally. So I'd say go out and register green right now. And, you know, we can work. We actually do work with the other non-corporate, uh, very progressive uh, uh, lefty parties. We work together. Go out and register because once you register, uh, it completely changes the ball game. Another thing you can do uh, is get ranked choice voting passed in your state, because right now they use this fear thing in order to intimidate yeah, that's people. A big one. And it's totally the fear thing. It's the politics yep. of fear, which <clears throat> has delivered what? Everything we were afraid of, all the reasons you were told that you had to vote um, for the lesser evil because you didn't want the bailouts for Wall Street and the offshoring of our jobs and the endless expanding war and the meltdown of the climate and the uh, attack on our civil liberties and on immigrants, all those reasons. Well, guess what? That's exactly what we've gotten by uh, supporting this politics of fear. Why is that? You know, it's because people stop coming out to vote against who they hate the most. You know, over 40 percent of people didn't come out to vote. And among those who did come out to vote, Donald Trump supporters, in fact, the majority of them were not voting for Donald Trump. They were voting voting against against Hillary Hillary Clinton. So bottom line is democracy needs our values and our visions to lead the way. We got to lead the way. We have to say no to the politics of fear. But for those Mm -hmm. other people who can't quite overcome their fears, we need ranked choice voting. It lets you rank your choices. Mm. So if your first choice uh, loses your vote is automatically reassigned to your second choice. Yeah. Okay. So there's no splitting of the vote. There's no wasting your vote. Uh, there's no spoiling the election. It's just plain old democracy. The Democrats yeah. won't pass it. And and um, Governor Brown in this state, for example, just vetoed a bill that would have allowed cities and towns to adopt ranked choice voting. Why are Democrats so afraid of this? Because it calls their bluff. Yeah. Because if we had ranked choice voting, they would have to actually compete for our votes. They don't yeah. want to compete for our votes. Why? Because they're not on your side. They're on the side of the one person. So if they won't actually allow us to liberate our votes and vote our values, they don't deserve your vote in the first place. So go out and register cool. green and I fight agree. for ranked choice voting. I agree. Now, we're, we're heading towards the tail end of this interview. But something that I do for every guest, we have a top three list for every uh, person on the show. And it's different depending on who they are. Now, I know you're very embraced by the hip hop community, you know, from Immortal Technique to Slug from Atmosphere, Mr. Fab voted for you, Equipto voted for you. So I want to talk music a little bit because not mm. only that, you're also a musician yourself and you've had released albums. So m- your top three is going to be Jill Stein. What is your top three musicians of all time? Now I know this is a tough question. Oh, so man. so while wow. you think about that, <laughs> I'm gonna give I'm going to give a message. I just want to thank everybody for watching the show, and we really appreciate it. If you like what you're watching, um, there's very easy ways to support if you want to go above and beyond. The first way is if you subscribe on YouTube, subscribe on iTunes. That helps keep our chart positions, and sharing the links is big. Tell all your friends to watch the episodes. Um, If you have any spare loot, you want to put it towards production value, equipment, gas, hotels, all the crazy things. One of these lights fall over and break, like all this crazy stuff. You're welcome to donate via PayPal at awkwardsbiz at gmail.com. That's O-K-W-E-R-D-Z-B-I-Z at gmail.com. 
And, uh, you know, we again, we appreciate everyone for watching. It's not a requirement. It's always appreciated. We will always do this for free for you guys regardless. We do not care. But with that being said, I know I didn't give you much time. Yeah. Oh, man. I've got it's to so think. It's so hard to the, just The thing is, I, I, have to, I have to answer the question, too. Yeah. So I'm telling myself, but luckily I got to think about it more. I kind of <laughs> cheated. So if you want me to go first, I can go first. That's fine. Yeah, go ahead. Well, my favorite musician of all time is Michael Jackson, period. That's mm -hmm. no, no one surpasses Michael Jackson, in my opinion. Um, number two, since I'm a rap guy, um, Ice Cube, just based off the impact in my life. I actually think you would like a lot of his albums, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big fan of Ice Cube. And number three, like... It's a hard one. Uh, you know, I like classic rock a lot. I would almost give it a tie between Jimi Hendrix and Carlos Santana. I think that'll be mm -hmm. my top three musicians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so for you, what do you think? Yeah. It doesn't have to be official, you know what I okay. mean? If you're, if you're having trouble, just well, give us some, some people that you love. Yeah. So I want to know. Well, you know, you you, uh, you sort of triggered for me my love of Hendrix and, and Carlos oh, yeah. Santana. So I got to say, yeah, they're un yeah. unsurpassable. They're on other levels. Um, I got to give a shout out to Victor Hara. Okay. Um, and Kilapayun. Okay. Um, amazing, you know, inspirational. They changed my life, I gotta say. Yeah. Um, uh, I love Public Enemy. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I love that. I love that. I was gonna recommend you some Public Enemy albums too. That's that's yeah. perfect. You, yeah. you hit yeah. it right on. Wow, that's excellent. Well, we appreciate it. Um, basically, before we get out of here, uh, tell the people. Uh, where they can find you on social media, yeah. how they can reach out to you, what's all your, you know, your Twitters and your Facebooks and your Instagram. Go ahead and tell them how to find you. Great. So uh, just go to Dr. Jill Stein, and that's D-R, no period, Jill Stein, all one word, mm -hmm. on social media. Uh, same for Twitter uh, and Facebook. And uh, the website is jill2016.com. And also go to your local green party, register green and get out and be green, act green, uh, take green power because Absolutely. we're out of time. The time is now. Let's do it. Most definitely. And follow me as well. That's Awkwards on pretty much everything or Awkwards 209. That's O-K-W-E-R-D-Z. That's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, even a video game stream on Twitch. We got Awkwards.com. Follow us. And before we let you out of here, we got to have you sign our magical table. We got to every guest. We got to get your autograph on oh, the table. Awesome. Feel free. Yeah. You can watch it on the video. If you're listening on audio, tune into the soothing sounds of pens <laughs> writing on tablecloth. Mm. This table is becoming super epic now. We've got so many cool signatures on here. It just gets better and better. I'm going to have to frame this thing Ooh, sometime. There it is. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Oh, Jill man. Stein. Thank Week. you, Awkward. Yeah. I'm such a fan and admirer and supporter. We'll vote for you anytime you're on anything. We appreciate you having being here, giving us your time. And thank you to everybody home for watching Outside the Box. Ooh. Ooh. Perfect.